congratulations to the class of 2016. It's great to be here. I, I drove into the parking lot this morning and I saw them all there in their gowns walking across the courtyard and I, I couldn't help but think of my own kids. I got, uh, I got four little ones. Walter is six, Isabel's four, Harry is two, and Ralph is, well, he's zero, as, <laughs> as Walter tells me, but he's nine months. And people tell me that I'll be sitting here very quickly with them. Uh, and I believe that's true. I put the kids to bed each night and um, I tell them a story. They get to choose who they want in the story and then I have to make up the story on the spot. And, uh, and then we do their prayers and then uh, talk about their day. Every night we do, some, we do some traditional prayers and then I say to them, I say, what, what would you like to say to Jesus tonight? My little girl, Isabel, she's four. She starts exactly the same way every night. So, Jesus, <laughs> I was putting her to bed last week. She comes up with these big words every week. Her word last week was um, recommend. Every sentence had recommend in it last week. <laughs> and then she moves on to a new. So I was putting her to bed one light, night last week and I said to her, um, so Isabel, what would you like to say to Jesus tonight? She said, so Jesus, Walter was a very naughty boy today. I said, well, tell Jesus what Walter did and then I'll find out too. <laughs> She's got a whole list. She said, uh, Walter took my candy, Walter pushed me, Walter stole my toy. I said to her, so Isabel, what do you recommend we should do with Walter? She said, put him on a cross like Jesus. <laughs> So clearly she needs a Holy Spirit education. <laughs> when you were little, when you were in the, the sandbox, there were certain things your parents didn't want you to do. And certain people your parents didn't want you to hang out with. And that hasn't changed. There's still certain things your parents don't want you to do and there's still certain people your parents don't want you to hang out with and you ask them if you ask them why they will articulate that in different ways but the fundamental foundational reason is because your parents have this dream for you they they want you to become the best version of yourself it's not an original dream they didn't come up with it themselves it's actually the the paternal dream the parental dream of god god wants you to become the best version of yourself and every day, some things you do help you become the best version of yourself and some things you do stop you from becoming the best version of yourself. And now you're going to go out into this world and you're going to have to make a whole series of choices. Life is choices. You're just constantly making choices, hundreds of choices every single day. And those choices become the foundation of your life. You have to work out how are you going to make those decisions going forward. One of the essential elements of education is that it is designed to teach us how to make great decisions, designed to teach us how to make good choices. Some choices are better than other choices, contrary to our culture's belief. We live in a culture that's trying to essentially murder truth. We live in a culture that doesn't believe in truth. We live in a culture that has taken on a relativism that is probably unmatched at any other time in history. We live in a culture that says what's true for you is true for you and what's true for me is true for me. You've got your truth and I've got my truth and I'll respect your truth and you respect my truth and you let me do what I want to do and I let you do what you want to do and we'll all live happily ever after. That is the great myth of our culture. We will not live happily ever after. We live in a culture that's trying to murder truth and if there's no such thing as truth, there's no such thing as wisdom. Because wisdom is not the amassing of knowledge. Wisdom is not some great elevated knowing. Wisdom is truth lived. Wisdom is taking truths that we learn from people, from books, from God, from the church, and turning it into our lives. Wisdom is tr truth lived. And so in a culture that's trying to murder truth, we see a lot less wisdom. 
It is a lot less often that you will look at a person or see someone on TV or read something even and say, wow, that's, that's really wise. There is great wisdom there. And if there's no such thing as truth and there's no such thing as wisdom, then there's no such thing as a great decision. All choices become equal in that environment, which is ludicrous, it's ridiculous. Even the village idiot comes to the conclusion that Mother Teresa made better choices than Adolf Hitler. Some choices are better than other choices. Some things are good, some things are bad, some things are right, some things are wrong, some things are true, and some things are false. And so you go out into the world to become a great decision maker in the midst of a very, very, very confused culture. And so you must decide whose voices or what voices will you listen to? What voices will you listen to? What voices will you allow to guide you? Heisman Trophy winner Danny Warfro told me a story once. He said, um, he said, throughout my life, I kept hearing this voice. He said, when I was in first grade, getting ready to race, the voice said to me, you can do it, Danny. You're the fastest boy in the grade. You can win this race. He said, when I was in third grade, taking a test and thinking about looking over at the other guy's paper, the voice said to me, Danny, you're a good boy. Don't cheat. He said, throughout my career as a professional athlete, I continued to hear this voice encouraging me, guiding me, warning me. He said, then fast forward to when I had my first child. He said, when I had my first child, my parents came into town to help me and my wife with the baby, Jonah. He said, I was walking past the nursery one day and I heard my mother talking to the baby. She was saying, Jonah, you're a good boy. You're a smart boy. You're a strong boy. He said the voice sounded familiar. Later that day, he was walking past the nursery. His dad was in the nursery now. He heard his dad talking to the baby. His dad was saying, Jonah, you're gonna grow up. You're gonna be good, you're gonna be strong. You're gonna do great things. Danny said he, he stood in the hallway, he began to cry. He realized that the voice he'd been hearing his whole life was the voice of his parents. You go out into the world now? Yes. You may be away from your family, living somewhere else for the first time. But their voices will still be there. The voice of your parents will be one among the many voices in your life. Your friends will have voices. Your peers will have voices. Your ego has a voice. Your conscience has a voice. And of course, God is constantly speaking to us. And you will have to decide which voice to listen to in different situations. You will have to decide which voices to allow to guide your life. But I want to talk to you about one voice in particular. And that's the voice you use to speak to yourself. We all talk to ourselves. We all talk to ourselves. And how we talk to ourselves has an enormous impact on our lives, massive impact on our lives. When you talk to yourself, is it a positive thing? When you talk to yourself, is it a negative thing? But how you speak to yourself each day is essential. When you wake up in the morning, 
Is the first thing you think about yourself, the first thing you say to yourself positive? Is the first thing you think about yourself, the first thing you say to yourself negative? Because in all of these voices, this will become the most important voice. Why? Because it determines what other voices you'll listen to. Is it more important than the voice of God? No, it isn't. But the way you speak to yourself will determine whether or not you'll listen to the voice of God in your life. The way you speak to yourself will determine whether or not and how you hear the voice of God in your life. So as you go out there into that crazy, noisy, busy world, be mindful of the voices that are guiding you. And be careful how you speak to yourself. The last thought I will leave you with is this. You have plans for your life. God has plans too. To the extent that they align is to the extent that you will experience a great happiness and joy in this life. Sometimes when you look at history and you look at the people God chooses to do great things, to our humanity it can be laughable. To our humanity. We think, wow, why would God choose that person to do that great thing? God always never picks the people you expect. He almost never picks the people in positions of power and authority. He almost never picks the most qualified people. He almost never picks the most educated people. He almost never picks the people we would pick to do great things in this world. You'll be preparing resumes at different times throughout your life. What does God look for in a resume? Seriously, when God's flipping through resumes, looking for someone great to send out on a great mission, what does God look for in a resume? Only one thing. Availability. It's the only thing God's interested in. Availability. How available are you to God at this moment in your life? Amidst all of the plans that you have, how available are you to God and his plans at this moment in your life? And it's a question for all of us at all times in our lives. So as you go home tonight, as you make your journey over these next weeks, I encourage you to think about the question, how available are you to God at this moment in your life? 20%, 50%, 80%, 96.4%? Because life, real life begins in a moment where we turn to God and make ourselves 100% available to Him. And the truth is, most people have never prayed a prayer of transformation in their whole life. Most people have never come to God and say, all right, God, whatever you want. I'm 100% available, God. I'll do whatever you ask me to do. Transform me, transform my life. I'm 100% available. I will do whatever you ask me to do. A prayer of transformation a prayer of availability because once we make ourselves available to God then incredible things begin to happen God bless you and congratulations again to the class of 2016 hi I'm Matthew Kelly thank you for watching every day we're releasing new videos and videos from the archives of the last 30 years so click the button below and subscribe so that you can get notifications and be aware of all the great content that can have a powerful impact on your life.